In other news, interest rates yesterday hit 7.1%. It's the highest in the last four months. We know we hit around that same number back in November 10th. And since then, it's it's been coming down. It hit 5.9. Uh, here recently, it got into the high sixes. And yesterday, it finally tipped 7 and got to 7.1. Today, I want to talk about what this means for your business. I want to dive into some slides with some data and really tell you what I think about all this. Um, but, you know, right this second, now that was 24 hours ago. You know, what's very interesting is where interest rates are right now, which I'll tell you in just a second. But the second thing, piece of data that's very, very interesting is mortgage applications dropped to a 1995 level. And so everybody's calling for this gloom and doom um, kind of situation when all of this is was so telegraphed and more than expected in the market. Um, and as we all know, as real estate professionals, nothing's ever going to zero. Closings are going to happen every day for the rest of our life. And we don't have anything to worry about when it comes to all of this. I'm going to talk about all this, show you guys some data. But the market can really go one of two ways right here. You know, if interest rates stay high and what I believe is going to happen, this is just my opinion and my intuition, you know, doing a lot of reading and research. I believe that interest rates are going to settle somewhere around six. That's kind of what I'm thinking in the six range, um, which will be good because as I'll show you in a second, um, the slightest changes in mortgage rates downward creates uh, massive waves of activity. Uh, there's agents still right now with interest rates where they are getting multiple offers in select markets around the country. It's not the same everywhere, and it's definitely slowed down a whole lot. Seven is a big, big change from where we are were, you know, 12 months ago and even 18 months ago. 18 months ago, we were looking at two and a half. <laughs> yeah, they got it like 2.65 or something like that. But that's okay. Because you know, as a real estate professional, what you have to realize is that we're not here to make the market do certain things, make people do certain things. We're to help, help people through these situations. And people need help more now than ever. Um, navigating this market, where we're going, um, because the, the simple fact is that there are a lot of people that need to sell. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to wait and that's that's OK. That's fine. Um, next week, Monday, I'm going to do a break, a full breakdown of uh, renting versus buying. Right. I'm going to illustrate with mathematical equations how. Even in today's high interest rate market and how much higher it is to buy than rent on a monthly basis right now as we speak, how the numbers actually work out just over the next nine to 10 years in your favor if you buy. So stay tuned for that. Um, but but let's dive in here for a second. Um, first off, here is the actual uh, article here where mortgage rates are back above seven. This was yesterday. Now, today, we're at 6.97. So it went down 13 basis points in just a day. So it just barely touched. It barely touched 7.1. Now, again, there's two things that's going to happen here. You know, rates are going to settle in. Now, what I, what I really believe here is that with affordability where it is, which is really high, housing affordability is is out of whack honestly and what i what i see transpiring is that yes there's a lot of markets getting multiple offers right now there's still a lot of activity out there compared to what you what you would think that it would be under these circumstances um but what i feel like is that there's only uh there's only a, a certain number of buyers who can actually afford at today's interest rate and prices. And I believe that we're going to run out of those type of buyers at some point in the year and things are going to get really slow. Now, interest rates are going to ease down a little bit and that's going to help tremendously. And also prices are going to continue to ease down. So all that is going to keep continuous uh, activity brewing. And that's what I think is really beautiful about this year is that if you take this year, 
to really build your influence. Talk to the as many property owners as you can. Create as many new friends in the market as you can. Do your weekly email. Do your social media. That you are going to be so extremely busy this year. And the amount of effort you put in compared to how many closings you have and how much money you make is probably not going to equal the same as what you did in 2021. But you got to think 2021, you know, you, you didn't have to put forth that much effort, and make a ton of money. That was a one-off year. And, um, it wasn't really quite normal. Now the pendulum has swung all the way the other way and it's kind of teaching us grind. And what's really cool is that when you go into a market like this and you get accustomed to the grind of having to build your business through a time like this and you build that influence so massively, um, when we get back to a normal market where it's a lot more balanced out um, and like, you know, prices coming down suggests a buyer's market, but inventory does not say that we have a buyer's market. It's the whole market's very confused right now. And even Gary Keller said that this is the most confusing market that he's ever seen. But as this happens, prices continue to uh, to dwindle. Now, let's say doomsday happens and they stay at seven or even go to eight. Well, what happens is prices come down. And when prices come down, um, properties are not going to be hard to sell. And we still have 75 percent of uh, absentee owner investment properties uh, being sold cash. Uh, we still have 29% of properties overall, uh, all transactions being sold cash. And that is up, you know, back in January, 2022, it was 27%. December, 2022, it was 20, uh, 28%. In January, 2022, it was 29% cash transactions. So cash will continue to happen. And if prices come down, cash buyers are going to come out by the you know, by the truckloads, because there is a lot of liquidity on the sidelines. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. It makes things so interesting. I, I believe one of the one of the key things for real estate agents is to be a listing agent. You know, focus all your energy on listings and take what buyers come out of those efforts. I said that in my book, List to Last. But I want to share with you some slides here. Um, this shows you the mortgage rate situation. Let's see if I can move this just a tad so I can see what's happening. Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that really well or not, but this is the mortgage rate situation, the mortgage, I'm sorry, mortgage applications. And then you can see here that this right here was the 2008, actually 2008, it, you know, it came down and, but really, you know, the 2000, I mean, it really almost like we're almost, it, it's almost like it's right there, 2016, 14. Uh, but we are a little bit lower, a literally a tad. And that line actually goes back to 1995. But what what's so interesting about this to show you this is that you know, we had the little rush of mortgage application activity. You see that right here. You see it right here. You know, mortgage application went down, and then boom, we had that pop. It was a 28% pop uh, week over week. Okay. So so that shows you because mortgage mortgage rates went down just a tad. So that shows you that the, the slight little decrease in mortgage rates, there's so much pent up demand. Okay. And what did that what did that do when that happened? Boom. Uh, we saw the data there with with NAR that we had 8.1% month over month pending home sales, right? Which was a which was the second straight month. It was the largest monthly increase since June of 2020. Okay, the largest increase since June of 2020. Now that's going to come back down because interest rates will come back up. The, it's 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 reduced demand. And so here we sit, but, but, but what a great test to the market, right? What a great testament to the resilient market that we're in, that the slight little decrease in interest rates is going to create some serious, uh, transactions. Now, a, a couple of key things to note, you know, right now, uh, in America, 2022, the average equity in a house 
is 58 percent. Back in 2008, it was 19, 27, 38, 44, 58 percent. You guys know how far down prices have to go to actually hit any kind of real danger when it comes to equity? Yes, there are people who who bought houses at the peak that uh, at an FHA, a 3 percent loan or whatever that are uh, underwater right this second. Very, very, very small amount. And those people as a whole did not buy to sell it next year. They bought it to keep it for 10 years, which, in fact, they will win. Delinquency rates are up on uh, FHA homes right now, uh, just a tad. And I believe that tad is about all we're going to see. But that's just my opinion. Again, you know, I'm not saying that I know what's going to happen because I don't. Nobody does. But it's just interesting to look at all this and think about what this means in relation to your business. So following the 2.5% drop in home prices, this is Fannie Mae talking, in the second half of 2022, Fannie Mae expects home prices to fall another 4.2% in 23, okay? And then in 2024, another 2.3%. So they're saying prices are going to drop four, a little over 4% this year, and then two, a little over 2% next year. So they're thinking slow decline all the way through the end of next year, okay? But look at this. If Fannie Mae is right and this housing slump, uh, this housing slump would see the national housing market pass through a mild home price correction, okay? Not a full-blown housing price crash, right? Okay, you guys all agree there that if this is true, 4% and 2%, we're going to look at a mild home price home price correction, which would be just fine. And after all, if these price drops do happen, national home prices, get this, would end up 2024 still up 29% from March of 2020 levels. So even if we go down another nationally speaking, right? And so what's interesting to, to, to note about this is that they're talking about about a 7% decrease from now to the end of 2024 of home prices. And so if it's a national average of 7%, that means you've probably got some markets that went down another 15%, 20% possibly. And then you've got some markets that go up in price from here. So keep that in mind that this is all relative to your local market. But let's look at a, let's look at a little bit more data here. This is this one blows my mind. Okay, this is homes sold in the country. The, the red is 2020, the orange is 21, the black is 22, and the blue is 23. Now look at the trends. It always starts down and then it always picks up about, you know, February. You see closings happening and then look how correlated every year is. You see the peaks are the same as the bottoms every year. You see that? See how they mirror each? Look at that. Look at that. And then look, when 2020 came back from the from the being shut down, look, it came back and you can't even see it because the orange line, it's almost identical. All right. And look at the black. It has the same peaks. And that's, that's this was last year. It has the same highs and lows at the same times throughout the year. Isn't that remarkable? It's just amazing to me how correlated every year and how seasonal these markets are. And this is inventory. This is active listings. Now everybody says, whoa, you know, you know, listings are going up. And as you guys know, as real estate professionals, that ain't happening. But look at look the blue line right here, which is this year, and the orange is 2021. And remember, 21 was the boom year. 21 was the boom year. You can't even see the blue line. Like, you know, last year, the market, you know, the black, you can see it was an abnormal curve. But you can see all it did was get get us right on track from where we were in 2021. And then look at the red. This is 2020. We're nowhere near 2020. And what's interesting about this chart is to see the the that the that every year in the beginning it's coming down. It starts to creep up in February. It slowly rises to August, and then it always starts to dwindle down. It's the same cycle every year, guys nothing to be worried about. So this is prices. And you can see right now, the blue line has officially intersected the black line, which means 
We're going negative year over year prices on a national level. Now you may already be negative in your market right now, or you may be positive. Okay. But this is just on the national average price per home. We are, uh, we are, we're negative. We're, we're even It's 0%. We are approaching negative. And that's when we're going to see some, some, uh, some nasty headlines in the news. And when we get about here, which is June, which is when everything peaked out last year, that's when we're going to have maximum, uh, year over year negative, uh, prices. And we'll probably be a little lower than we are now. And so even though the market's going to be just fine, we're going to see negative headlines in the news. Nothing to see here. But again, mortgage applications, okay. Pending sales up. Let's go. And what does all this mean for your business? <laughs> That's what you might be asking yourself. Well, let me tell you what it means. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Your job is to go out there and help these people that need help buying and selling. Closings are happening every day. Do not sit around thinking, oh, there's no deals happening. Because that's when you're going to look back three years from now and realize, wow, there was a lot of transactions happening at really good prices. The market always bounces back. Always surges back 110% of the time. And the quicker, the fat, the, as fast as this market has shifted, I believe, my theory is, is that the market's going to shift back even faster. So keep that in mind as this thing unloads. But we know closings happen every day for the rest of our lives, regardless of market conditions. I've been saying this for years, guys, for years. This was my business back in 2008. Here's prices coming down. My business, I kind of held firm with my market share. And then all of a sudden, when the market bounced back, my business exploded. And that's how I got to 100 deals a year. Right? I didn't do anything different. I just, time went by, my database grew, my influence grew, and then, and then, my, then the market did the rest. So take advantage of this moment, guys. Please take advantage of this moment. I'm going to, you know. You can't look back and say, I didn't tell you to go take advantage of this moment. This was a screenshot of MLS from January 2014 to the end of December 2021. So eight years. And there I am right at the top of my entire MLS. That's teams. That's legends. That's everybody. And it's because of what I did during the 2008, 2009, 2010 which is your moment right this second. The agent who creates the most friends with property owners in the market wins, <laughs> period. Now, what do you need to do? Your daily goal needs to be five new friends a day, property owners in the market. Okay, over five years, that's going to equal 6,000 people in your database. You're going to create a weekly email for your entire database on the same day of the week forever. You're going to watch the MLS hot sheet every day to stay on top of the market. You're going to make calls from 9 to 12 every day and do social media all afternoon. It's not real difficult, guys. I'll leave this here for a second so you can screenshot it, but it's this is super easy stuff. You just got to go do it. The problem is a lot of you just aren't doing it because you're getting caught up in the media. And, and everything else. And as far as this social media goes, like I said, I'm going to do a webinar March 16th. Uh, make sure you're part of my text community. So just text me at 251-312-8844. 251-312-8844. Make sure you're a part of that so you can get the link when I send it out, along with everything else I do on that text platform. But I'm doing a webinar March 16th to go through my process of creating social media at scale to build my businesses. So don't miss that. I'll be there. All right. Now, I, I, you know, of course, I can't go through every little thing, but everything I teach you is free. It's, everything's free, guys. <laughs> Zero to diamond.com. I got courses, seven or eight courses there, all free. 
people are absolutely crushing it, right? Go read my book. List the last, how to survive every real estate market crash. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give away five, I'm going to give away 10, 10 signed copies in my book. I got a whole box of them right here next to me. Um, it's, it's taped up or I would break out a book. Um, but make sure you're part of this text. I'm going to give away 10 signed copies today, right? Um, and also, uh, I'll give you these slides. Text me at that number and I'll give you all these slides for this presentation. All right. But anyway, the bottom line is, is that, yeah, interest rate shot up. Yeah, buyers may be a little scared. That's okay. They they should be scared. Here's the punchline for buyers. If you're going to buy to keep it for save in five years, five, 10 years, you know, you're going to make money through principal pay down and appreciation. And this is taking out consideration for utilities, property tax increases, real estate commissions when you need to sell. I'm going to break all this down in a video next week. I'm going to give you the exact equation here to go through your go through with your clients to show them the difference in buying versus renting even in this high interest rate market. Now, I'm not saying, "Oh, you know, go buy because it's better." I'm saying even right now it's good. What I would do if I were a buyer and I can wait, I would probably wait a little bit cuz rates are going to ease just a tad and I would wait just a tad so that I could be in even a better position. But even right now, it's it's like night and day. It's like, honestly, it comes out to about a quarter million dollars over the course of nine years. That's if you bought something for with a $300,000 loan at 7% interest and you never refied out of that loan. You kept it at 7%. Basically, worst case scenario, you still make a quarter million dollars through a debt pay down, principal pay down. And appreciation. I'm going to break all those numbers down next week. Um, if you guys need anything, put it in the comments. Let me know what you think about all of this. I'm going to put another video right here uh, for you to continue watching. And until next time, keep selling. I 35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs and these lanes ain't like me. Drop a